I have been promising you this video since before my unplanned hiatus, but I guess it's better later than never. Today we're finally getting around to doing an update on some of the latest fine jewelry and watch launches by some of your favorite luxury brands, including Cartier, One Cleef, and even Hermes. So if you're planning on expanding your horizon or maybe even your fine jewelry collection in the coming month, these are some pieces I would love for you to at least know about. So without further ado, if you'd like to hear my very honest thoughts on some new launches from Cartier, a brand new take on their iconic love range, a new watch from One Cleef, and even some incredibly fun new pieces from the RMS fine jewelry range, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. So today we'll only be focusing on some of the latest launches from these jewelry houses, but if you would like to hear my general thoughts on these brands, if you would like to learn more about their heritage, where they come from, some of their most iconic lines and the inspiration behind each one, I do actually have a brand deep dive on every single one of these brands, which I can make sure to have linked down below for you, because today we will not have time to go through everything that you need to know about these brands. But if you would like to get a little bit more insight, perhaps if you're new to the world of One Cleave, or if you would like to hear why I am personally not the biggest fan of something like the Love Range from Cartier, you can learn a lot more about these things in those brand deep dives. But without further ado, Let's start with one cleef and the reason I'm holding my phone is because I actually have some pictures pulled up. I wanted to start with the newest watch launch from one cleef, which I feel like not many people know about one cleef's watches. Obviously one cleef is best known for the all umbra line, even though they have a lot more to offer. Again, it's something that I discuss in my one cleef deep dive, but believe it or not, one cleef has been making watches for hundreds of years at this point. Obviously their know-how and their core competence is in jewelry making and more importantly setting gemstones and diamonds in a really unique and really refined way but they have been crafting watches for hundreds of years they have even made watches out of really unusual materials they've done watches watch cases out of wood they've done watches with special ceramic pieces and at this point their watches are definitely something that i would call almost high time pieces like their watches are not most of their watches i should say are not really made for everyday wear because they tend to be a little bit more over the top some of their watches cost hundreds of thousands of dollars like the astronomy watch they even have some more quirky designs some would say cheesy i would personally use the word romantic they have this one watch which i believe is called the lover's bridge which actually features a bridge design on the face of the watch with a woman and a man on each side of the watch and as time goes on or I should say as the day goes on the lovers get closer and closer to each other and then at midnight they actually meet for a kiss and then they go back to the opposite sides of the watch which I do think is a very beautiful design so Von Cleef definitely has a lot to offer when it comes to timepieces if you're looking for more eye-catching unique special designs Von Cleef has got you covered but I do think that they're trying to tap into a different market with watches that are a little bit more wearable because they have just launched a brand new design. Well, it's not actually brand new to the house of One Cleave, but it is now being put into mass production. Mass production after almost 80 years at this point because this watch was designed in 1949 by Pierre Arpel actually for personal use. Now Pierre Arpel is not the founding father of the brand. The brand was founded in 1906 but as the name suggests he was one of the members of the Arpel family because it is a brand that was family run for a really really long time and this watch was designed specifically for him. It is a really simple, I guess some could say it's a masculine watch but at this point it is offered in two different sizes in size 38 and size 44. When I use these numbers these refer to the measurements of the face and they are in millimeters so it is offered in two different sizes and even though it was originally designed as a man's watch I do think 
anyone could have a place for this in their collection as long as they enjoy a really simple, rounded, more stripped down design that is incredibly, incredibly elegant. It features a really, really thin case that is locked with two, they call them central attachments. To me, they look like almost little pearl details. And my favorite detail on this watch is something that you'll find on a lot of watches that are designed by jewelry houses, which is how the strap is actually attached to the watch. I love the way the bar sits against this really, really simple design. So the strap doesn't immediately come out of the case. Instead, there is that bar detail, which makes it just a little bit more delicate and elegant in my opinion. It's not exclusive to one cleave. It's something that you will see a lot of the times on a more elegant and more niche watches, but it's not a detail that you'll find really often on more commercial watches, which is why I think this watch feels a lot sleeker and a lot more refined. Anyway, it's available in two different sizes with the case either being in white or rose gold with or without diamonds. Now, something to keep in mind is that the white gold version is going to be slightly more expensive than the rose gold version, which is usually the case when it comes to designer fine jewelry. And as far as I understand, it's not because white gold includes more gold than like, let's say if you buy an 18 karat white gold piece, it's not going to have more gold in it than 18 karat yellow or rose gold wood but I believe it features more rhodium. I think that's the material that that gives it this really cool toned white hue because obviously white gold is not organically available. It's something that needs to be man-made. So they use gold and they mix it with other precious materials to make this particular shade. And that's why white gold tends to be more expensive. And also a lot of people think that it looks just a little bit more expensive, which allows brands to charge more. But I do think it's the addition of rhodium and rhodium plating that makes white gold a little bit more expensive. But if you're a jeweler, please feel free to correct me in the comment section down below because I am not an expert by any means. It's something that I have just been told over the years by different brands. So that is something for you to keep in mind. It is available in two different sizes with or without diamonds in rose or in white gold. And it ranges between 15 and $36,000 depending on the size, the shade of gold and whether you prefer diamonds or not, which obviously makes these watches insanely expensive but i think if you are a one cleave fan or if you are really into your watches and you're looking for a watch that features a leather band i feel like there aren't that many watches that come with leather band that are really popular these days most watches that i can think of that feature a leather bracelet are from cartier when i think of rolex even though i i am aware that they offer watches that come with a leather bracelet they are not nearly as popular as some of the watches by cartier or even Patek, but if you, you are looking for a watch that's a little bit more delicate, a little bit more sleek, and is also a newer design, this I think would be a beautifully understated and elegant Let's watch. Let's shift gears and move on to our next brand, which as I promised is going to be Cartier. We're going to be looking at the latest iterations, or I should say the latest additions to the Cartier Love range, which if you know me, you know that I am not the biggest fan of, or at least not at this point, because back in the day, I was a big fan. I spent way too much money. I mean, I didn't have a huge collection of Cartier Love pieces, but I bought a couple of bracelets and I think one ring from this collection, which I would definitely not do at this point. Not because there's anything particularly wrong with the quality or the designs themselves, even though they're not the most revolutionary. I do appreciate that they go with anything and everything. They are kind of bland and you can really wear them on a daily basis, which is what you are supposed to do with them. They were one of the first pieces by a prominent jewelry house that was designed for everyday use and that you didn't have to buy as part of a set, which I do appreciate. And I did appreciate the design back in the day, but I feel like at this point, they are just kind of expected. I feel like anyone who has anything to do with luxury fashion owns these pieces in some shape or form, whether they own the real deal or a dupe or a replica. To me, these pieces are just kind of default. As soon as you think of designer fine jewelry, these are the pieces that you immediately think of. And to me, when something is so common, they lose their charm and their magic. And these pieces are way too expensive for something that I am not in love with, 
if that makes any sense. But I know I am in the minority because these pieces are still incredibly popular. Cartier also knows that, so they have been trying to milk this collection for many, many years at this point. They've been playing around with the width, the colors, the finishes of the different pieces in the Cartier Love collection. Last year, I think they introduced these when I was in Spain. I saw these when these first launched. They came out with a range of love bracelets, the original love bracelets that come with a screwdriver in a brushed finish, which you wouldn't think makes that much of a difference because the design remained the same, but they actually looked very different from the original highly polished love bracelets. So if you are looking to add a new Cartier bracelet to your collection, but you're looking for something a little bit more special, I would actually suggest looking into the brushed pieces, which are now available in all three gold finishes. So they come in white, yellow, and rose gold. I believe when I first looked at this bracelet, it was only available in white or yellow, but since then, they have also come out with it in rose gold, and I believe it starts at $73. $300. I think they are the exact same price as their original counterparts, but it is a special design. And as I said, it really is quite different from the original polished love bracelets. There is something just a little bit more subdued and subtle about them. I mean, they're still incredibly recognizable, but they do feel just a little bit different. Now, if you're in the same boat as me and anytime you see a love bracelet or a love ring, regardless of the finish, the color, or how many diamonds it features, you just feel like it's something that you've been there and you've done it. I do have a brand new design to show you if you still have an appreciation for this more industrial design and you're still in love with the brand. And in case you were not aware, the original inspiration for the love range comes from chastity belts and that's why it features the screwdriver and the screw-like etching, which if you do like the look of, they have recently launched a new single earring, which of course pays tribute to the original love design with this tiny little hoop, but it also features a tiny little cuff that is set with diamonds, and it is connected to the love hoop with a really, really thin and delicate chain. I am personally a big fan of these cuff designs. Obviously, it's not something that I would wear myself, but I really do like the look of these more substantial head turning pieces. And I love the fact that this piece doesn't simply rely on the really recognizable look of the love range, but that it plays around with different textures and different finishes. So you do have the movement of the chain, which I think would give this piece a really cool rock and roll feel, but then it's made a little bit more delicate and luxurious with the diamond set cuff. So this is definitely a really beautiful piece. It's not for the faint of heart because this single earring costs $5,000. Obviously it was meant to be worn as a statement piece. So you would only really need one, but it's definitely for the true Cartier collector. Now, if you do like the sound of this particular piece, but you don't feel comfortable spending $5,000 at Cartier on a piece like this, they do actually have not a similar, but I do think you could do something similar with this particular piece. They have another earring, a tiny little earring from the Just Unclue line, which you buy as a single piece. I think it comes in either rose or yellow gold that you can put anywhere on your ear because it's quite small. So you could even use it as a piercing, not necessarily as a main earring. And I do think that if you paired that with a hoop that you already have in your collection, perhaps a Just Unclear hoop or a hoop from the Love line, it could give you a really similar, really cool and bold feel for a fraction of the price because the Just Unclear mini earring, I think is under a thousand dollars. I think it's somewhere between nine, I think it's around $960. I have looked at that piece as a gift, not for myself, but obviously if you have your ears pierced anywhere, you can wear them. And I do think that it is also considered a unisex piece. So anyone could play around with it. So considering how affordable, well, affordable for a Cartier piece that is, I actually think that it would add quite a bit of bang for your buck to your collection. Anyway, the Justin Clue little piece is not a new design, but the single earring from the Love Range is, but I felt like they were quite comparable in terms of what they could do for your collection and who would enjoy this more 
cool and rock and roll. I look. was actually going to include some Chanel fine jewelry in today's video, but their website is down as we speak for maintenance. So I couldn't pull exact prices and pictures for this video. So if you would like to hear my thoughts on Chanel fine jewelry, let me know in the comment section and I can definitely include them in an upcoming video. Something that I know that they are re-promoting, it's not a brand new design, but they actually have a collection that's inspired by the number five. Obviously number five is really iconic to the house of Chanel. They have a really popular fragrance named after Coco Chanel's favorite number, which was number five. And that is a motif that they have used to build an entire collection of fine jewelry, which I'm personally not the biggest fan of, but they do have some new designs and this collection is getting a big re-promotion for this current season. So it might be something that you want to look into. There are some pieces that I like more than others if the website comes back up before this video goes live, which I would be really surprised if it didn't. I will make sure to include some pictures here Personally, it's not my favorite collection. I am partial to the Coco Crush range, which I don't own myself, but I do think that it is an incredibly understated collection, yet those pieces look quite expensive. Not that they're not expensive because they are, some of those pieces are more expensive than Cartier, but I do think that you get a completely different facet added to your collection. Anyway, since we cannot talk about Chanel, it's time to move on to Hermes. And I have recently talked about their latest watch launch, which is the introduction of the Hermes Cut Watch. In case you did not see my last video on this piece, I thought I would include it here because it is a piece that I feel like you will see and hear about quite often if you are a fan of Hermes. This launch is the brand's latest attempt to get everyone hooked on their watches because Hermes is really big on their timepieces. You know, it's something that they always push. Personally, I do feel that Hermes's watches are extremely overpriced for what they are, even though I do like the look of some of their watches. I personally would not spend my hard-earned money on Hermes watches directly from the store mainly because they don't hold their value. So you can actually find these watches for a fraction of the price on their pre-loved market. But Hermes loves promoting their watches. They are really proud of the fact that all of their mechanisms are made in-house in Switzerland. And this watch is no exception. This particular design is a lot more casual and a lot more wearable than some of their previous creations. So the idea is that this is their true everyday piece, something that every Hermes collector needs in their collection because it's something that they would be able to take advantage of on a daily basis. And there are quite a few unique things to note when it comes to this watch. First of all, it's only available in one size, in size 36, which Hermes calls a large, which leads me to believe that at one point they'll come out with an even smaller version. And I wouldn't be surprised if they also launched an extra large version for men because their mascot is currently only available in their women's line. But I mean, you know me, you should buy whatever you like as long as you feel it suits your proportions. So if you have a smaller wrist, I do think that this is a watch that would definitely be unisex, especially considering that it is not a particularly feminine shape. To me, I think I said this in my original review, but it feels like a watch between a Rolex Oyster and a Patek. I always forget what that Patek Philippe watch is called. It's extremely popular. I think it's called the Aquanaut. The fact that it features this rubber band makes me think of the Aquanaut and then the shape reminds me of the Rolex Oyster. So I feel like it's the merge of those two designs. That's what this particular watch reminds me of. And the price range is very comparable to. So this watch ranges between seven and $22,000, depending on the finish that you opt for. All the watches are made of stainless steel, but some of them feature a touch of gold and then others even come with diamonds. So you definitely have a lot to choose from. And the reason Hermes claims that it's so wearable is because it features a really unique mechanism that allows its owner to really easily just snap the band off and replace it with another rubber band and then others actually come with either a two-tone or a full-on stainless steel metal bracelet and unlike other watches that you would have to take to you know a jeweler or someone who specializes in watches to replace the strap or you have to be kind of 
an expert on watches to be able to do it yourself at home. These watches, the band you can really easily snap off and then replace with whatever you want. And you can buy the rubber bands in all the different colors for I think $250 a piece. So you can basically build a collection of their rubber bands and play around with them depending on what color you truly need, which I do really appreciate. I like the fact that it features this really unique mechanism that allows you to play around with the color and the bracelet itself. But as I mentioned, I personally would not spend so much money on a timepiece from Hermes when that money could go towards a serious timepiece from a brand like Rolex or Patek. I understand that they would have a different look, but not when it comes to this particular watch because I think it was very heavily inspired by some of Rolex's best-selling everyday watches. But if you're an RMS fan, I thought I would mention it here. And then moving on to fine jewelry, the latest addition to the RMS fine jewelry range is the so-called Clou Dash Collection, which draws inspiration from the four-faceted Medor studs. It's a design that you're going to be familiar with if you are a big Hermes fan, because it's something that has been in use for, I think, almost, almost 100 years, 97 years to be exact, because this Medor design was first used on a belt in 1927. It wasn't introduced to the Hermes range in 1927 because this is something that was previously reserved for their pieces made for dogs, specifically hunting colors, but they actually introduced the first piece that was intended for humans in 1927. And if you're confused why some things are called CDC or Collier Edition, while others are called Clomador or just Medor, the difference is that when it comes to CDC pieces, they will feature at least four, four Medor pyramids and an additional ring. And if you have less pyramids than four and there isn't an actual ring, they will be called Medor, but there is a little bit, well, not a little bit, but there's quite a big overlap between the two ranges, except when we talk about CDC pieces, there is going to be that additional ring. Anyway, we obviously you do not have the ring on in this collection, so they are called the Clue Dash pieces, and it is an extremely iconic design to the house of Hermes. It definitely has actually quite similar to the single earring that we saw from Cartier, a bold rock and roll feel to it, which if you know Hermes, you know that it's something that they're not a stranger to. It is quite an expensive collection. It features several different designs. The pieces are available exclusively in rose gold with or without diamonds. There are pieces that feature a single Medor, whereas others have a ton of them stacked in different sizes and different finishes, I guess you could say, because some of them feature diamonds, but others don't. But if you are drawn to this particular collection, I would start with the single pendants. They offer the single pendants either with or without diamonds. I personally prefer the one with the diamond finish, or there is also another ring in this collection, which features two bands with two independent charms. One is slightly bigger than the other, but the smaller one is finished in diamonds. And then the two bands are connected with quite a thick gold ring, which reminds me there is a brand that does these rings that feature several different bands that are connected in a seemingly really rustic way, but there is something really quite special about that brand. I can't remember what they are called, but I'll make sure to leave the name of the brand up here. I am a huge fan of that brand. It's not a brand that I have any personal experience with, but I have seen, I've been seeing more and more people wearing their creations, and I really do love how industrial and utilitarian their pieces look, and that's what this particular double ring reminds me of. Anyway, I digress. It is quite an expensive collection. You have a lot to choose from, but I do think that some pieces are better than others. So I would suggest starting with either the single pendants or with the double ring. I think those are the pieces that would add the most interesting facet to your collection. And you know, this is a collection that if you know, you know, if you know Hermes, if you're familiar with their history, their heritage, their iconography, these pieces you will spot from a mile away. But if you're not, Hermes will not be the first 
brand that comes to mind. But this actually brings us to the end of today's video on some of the latest designer fine jewelry launches. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and your review in the comment section. Please let me know in the comment section your thoughts on these pieces. And if you're adding any one of these to your wish list and while you're down there make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet i really appreciate you being here and watching and i cannot wait to see you back here with a new video really really soon